Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Rotel and the model number is RMB1075 this is the version 2 and the manufacturer refers to this as a high current 5 channel amplifier in terms of general specifications continuous power output is 100 watts into 8 ohm speakers frequency response is 10 hertz to 80 kilohertz total harmonic distortion over 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz is 0.03 percent input sensitivity for each of the inputs is one volt into an impedance of 27 kilo ohms and then dimensions with this 440 by a height of 139 and a depth of 396 and this amplifier is substantial in terms of build quality metal construction so it's weighing 15.5 kilograms now when you look from the top of the amplifier there is an awful lot going on you can see the toroidal transformer which is bolted through onto the chassis and then closest to us is the power supply board and this is where you see the large power supply electrolytic capacitors and we'll come back to those in a little while and then on the left hand side there are actually two channels on that circuit board the same also on the right and then as you look towards the front of the amplifier there is the fifth channel and then you can just about make out from the secondary of the toroidal transformer there are two bridge rectifiers which are bolted to the chassis acting as a heat sink and then just to the right of the toroidal transformer you can also see that there is a smaller circuit board and then this circuit board here is used for the trigger input stroke trigger output circuit now if we look from the rear of the amplifier there's a number of things that we need to look at you can see that we have our input RCA connectors so we have surround front right center and then the same then for the left hand channel you can also see that there is a switch for the trigger input and then there is a DB25 multi-pin connector now you can wire that connector effectively replacing all of those individual RCA input sockets if you wish it wasn't the Rotel at the time provided a lead that you could have but what they refer to is maybe an audio shop where you would be purchasing this would make up such a lead and then on the power input you can see that you have the live and neutral there's no ground connection on there just to avoid ground loops and then you can see high quality terminals for each of your outputs now I'll describe the fault in a moment which was reported by the customer but we did need to replace all of these electrolytic capacitors because many of them had dried out and they were going high resistance and also lower in capacitance as well but remember this really is the power station of the amplifier those capacitors work extremely hard delivering all of the required current and energy for each of the output stages of the amp what i do like about this amplifier is the build quality you know there hasn't really been any compromise in terms of design and as you would expect with Rotel amplifiers the circuit board layout is very clean you don't get electrolytic capacitors sitting next to power components effectively aging them on that circuit board which is slightly lifted up this is where we have the center RCA socket and again I'll come back to that in a moment with regard to the fault that we were seeing and then on this photograph here I'm just taking a view of one of the input modules so as we said that this has on there two channels and there are also two test points and two sets of presets but we'll come to that later on in the tutorial now the issue that the customer reported was that they heard a very very loud buzzing sound which was coming from the amplifier and that was on different output channels and of course that can be most alarming for the owner of the amplifier because it could for example indicate that maybe there was excess current which was flowing or there was a fault inside the amplifier and for these types of amplifiers you know it's not going to be connected to a cheap set of speakers so quite correctly the owner of the amplifier quickly switched it off and then contacted me with regard to the issue that they were seeing now this fault can be caused due to many different factors it could well have been a fault with the amplifier when I actually came to test it the hum which I was hearing was more akin to a grounding problem it sounded like a 50 hertz mains frequency hum that I was hearing and not like a rectified you know 100 hertz hum which you would typically find maybe if the electrolytic smoothing capacitors had begun to fail so what I've done here is I've just zoomed in and these are the input RCA sockets and this was the same on all of the input sockets 
it wasn't just a case of a dry solder joint. What you found was actually the ground connection, which is the outer part of these RCA sockets, had snapped away. And then this was the left channel when you look from the rear. And then here you see the same thing down on the right channel. There was a slight amount of cracking around there, but I needed to desolder them. And then what I've done is I've just put them onto here. And then you can see already that the actual grounding pin has snapped away. So if we maybe go onto this photograph here and I've just highlighted it, you can see snapped off the board and these are not low quality RCA sockets you know they are gold plated but yeah very strange and again this was the same even though the RCA socket is different for the center because it's just a single RCA socket all of them needed then to be replaced so rather than maybe solder some link wire around this broken off connection and then solder it back into the board what was installed then were brand new RCA input sockets and then on this photograph here, what you can see is exactly what I described. Just completely snapped off the board. So very strange. So it was just a case of installing brand new RCA sockets. And then that fixed the issue associated them with the power hump, which we were hearing. And I'll show you later on in the tutorial, one of the photographs and you can see the new sockets in place. Now the other issue, and I'd sort of spoken to the customer about this, was the electrolytic smoothing capacitors. This amplifier had seen good service, so they were then checked with the ESR meter. So here you see an extract from the service manual, and then what I've done is I've just circled this area of the power supply, and you can see that there are 8 times 10,000 microfarad, 63 volt smoothing capacitors on that circuit board. And when I remove them, and you'll see this later on in the tutorial, you can see that the value of the capacitor had started to decrease and commonly with large electrolytics when they dry out once you desolder them if you just gave them a shake you'll hear them rattling so you know straight away that you know those capacitors need to be replaced and then here this is this power supply board now lifted up and of course you have to desolder each one of the electrolytics but at the same time what I'm also doing is I'm just scanning across that board just to make sure that there are no bad solder joints and then also as well on this board you'll find that there are protection fuses and I've covered this in other tutorials just make sure that those fuse carriers the ends of them haven't splayed out slightly and you've got an intermittent contact very common just remove the fuses squeeze in the ends and then snap the fuses back into position now on this photograph it's our old friend the brown conductive glue as you can see it's all over the circuit board and there's a number of links on there and it's also connecting with some common connections as well. And you can also see the different fuses on there which I referred to a moment ago. So what are you going to do? Well you can't leave that glue in place because it's going to cause issues in the future. It's not only corrosive but it then starts to conduct so it's acting like a higher value resistor passing current onto other parts of the circuit which it should not. Now how do you remove it? Well first of all you don't get a sharp metal screwdriver just use a plastic label removal tool and then you can then remove it from the circuit board. So here you can see all of that conductive corrosive glue has been removed and there's no damage to that circuit board at all. Meticulously cleaned off and we've really avoided a future issue which is common as we've done in many of these tutorials. At the same time I also check some of the smaller electrolytic capacitors with the ESR meter around that low voltage power supply and all of them were very very good no issue at all so no requirement then to change them and then here you can see on the ESR meter that the capacitance value for this capacitor has started to deteriorate and even this one was also rattling when you gave it a shake and as you saw from the circuit schematic we replace those then with 105 degree high quality electrolytic capacitors. And then here you can see all of the different capacitors have been removed. These are the Rotel branded ones. And now that those capacitors have been replaced, as you see here, this amplifier will provide you know many, many years of high quality service. As with all of these tutorials, if you do follow along and you pay attention to the information which is provided, if you do have one of these amplifiers, you can undertake this work yourself. And then on this photograph here, we're just taking a top view and you can see the banks of electrolytic smoothing capacitors. And you can also make out the trigger board as well. 
You'll also see as well that all that dust and debris has been removed from the amplifier circuit board. Again, not an issue. This amplifier hasn't been stored in a damp environment or an environment you know, which causes additional problems. So it's just a case of just using a stiff brush and a compressed air hose just to clean it all out. And you can see here, very, very nice condition. And then we didn't sort of just stop at just checking the main power supply board. Each one of those circuit boards was removed and then verified to make sure that A, there was no dry solder joints. So here this is one of the two channel output boards and you can see the four power output components for each channel and then also the driver components. And then from a solder side point of view, this is with the heat sink removed. And we also fitted as well replacement insulating washers for each of the power output transistors because of course they are non-tab isolated. And we repeated this, as I said, for all of the circuit boards, including the one at the front. Now, you did tend to find some dry solder joints on some of the power components, but overall, I'd say that the solder quality on this amplifier is very good. And at the same time, because you've got access to this solder side, I was also able to check with the ESI meter all of the other electrolytic capacitors, and they were fine. They didn't need to be replaced. And then here what we're showing you, this with the arrow pointing, this is the trigger board. So what's the purpose of the trigger board? Well, there's two 3.5mm jack sockets on that board. And then remember that the power button on the front of the amplifier will override the trigger board. But if that is switched on, you can then use an external 12 volt trigger signal to turn the amplifier on or off. So the circuit board will read that status coming in. And then there is a power relay which will then provide the power to the toroidal transformer or will de-energize to turn off the power to the transformer. If you connect then to the output of the trigger board, if you add additional units, you could just connect them and then you have then a common trigger to turn on all of the units within your system just from a common signal. And then here is the trigger control board with that relay as mentioned previously. And again, you have to remove it because there's going to be potentially some dry solder connections on there and then what I also did as well is I just replaced the relay this is a very very common relay and I've put the part number in the description for the video and then here I mentioned this a while ago these are the brand new RCA input sockets that have been installed so high quality RCA socket and hopefully you know the customer doesn't see the same issue that they saw you know in a few years time I personally have sometimes seen you know, ground connections break off or in some cases even not push through the board. But quite unusual to see so many input RCA sockets broken away. And that would sort of deem that maybe the metal that has been used on the original ones was very, very thin. And then here, a zoomed out view. So again, I put a circle around the RCA input socket just to re-emphasize that. And then once that has all been done, then the amplifier is then powered up and it's left probably running for about 30 minutes just to ensure that everything then warms through. Because the next thing that I need to be doing is to do the bias adjustment and the alignment. And remember, as you can see here, which is an extract from the service manual, we have five bias settings that we have to make. Now remember, as I said, for this amplifier, it doesn't have a speaker protection relay or relays. It's just using protection fuses. So what I will always do is to put my multimeter across the speaker terminals for each one of the channels. And I'm checking the DC offset. And it's very, very low, you know, less than a millivolt on this amplifier. But if you did have an issue, then it's going to be in the earlier part of the amplifier stage. But there's no single adjustment you can make on this amplifier. The only adjustment is for the bias adjustment so you can see here that we have the individual test points on each one of the circuit boards and then what you're looking to do is to adjust it until your meter reads five millivolts so here is an extract so this is the left channel voltage and power supply amplifier stages and you can see here what i've done is i've just highlighted vr201 and that is your preset and this is the one that you need to then adjust until you are reading this five millivolts across your test point. And if you did have an issue with high DC offset, then you need to be looking, as I said, towards the earlier stages of the amplifier. So you have this dedicated IC coming in. And then after that, you can see then to the right, you have what we term long tail pair transistors. 
And during manufacture, they would normally match the gain of these transistors, so they would be pretty much identical. But commonly what happens is over time, the gain of these transistors can change, so they are no longer matched, and then you can either get a positive or a negative high DC offset. Some amplifiers, you have a preset where you can adjust it and then correct for that. Other amplifiers, you have what we call a servo circuit, so they will measure the DC offset on the output terminals and then automatically adjust then the bias of the stage of the amplifier to eliminate any DC offset. But what you would do here, no point to remove the transistors and make measurements. What I simply do is I hold in stock transistors, I would match up the gains and I would just do a block replacement just to eliminate any issues. Now remember with this amplifier, once you've done your bias adjustment, leave it running maybe another 10 or 15 minutes and then come back and you might need to just make a final adjustment. But what I found here with this amplifier was it was very, very easy to make the adjustment when what I'm referring to there, it wasn't twitchy. You know, I didn't have to just slightly move and it went too high or too low, very smooth in operation. But sometimes if maybe there is some dust or dirt which has accumulated over time, Remember to depower the amplifier, spray the preset then with deoxid D5, rotate it backwards and forwards, and then return it to roughly the position that it was at before you depowered it and cleaned it. And then normally that should be sufficient so you can make the adjustment more precisely. And then here where I'm showing, you can just sort of make it out to the rear of this photograph. You can see where my hook clips are connected across one of the test points. And this amplifier is so big on the bench, you can't make out. But there is actually my multimeter just behind there. And then I'm just looking to read directly 5 millivolts. So once all that was done, and if we look here, if you're an electronics engineer and you're into amplifiers, this is a beautiful photograph because you can see the amplifier really in pristine condition. All the work has now been carried out, new sockets, new power supply electrolyte capacitors, everything all checked, everything aligned. And then, of course, the final part is to put the amplifier onto test. And this amplifier ran for four hours and incredible sound quality comes from this unit. So there you have it. And as always, I really appreciate you stopping by. And if you need any help, guidance or support, by all means, email audio amplifier servicing at AOL.com. And I'll be more than happy to come back to you and provide any guidance or support that you may require. So until the next time, I wish you all the very best. Cheers and bye bye.